Hello, this is Skyler, bringing you my latest episode in programming the LEGO Mindstorms NXT using Robot C. Today we are, I am, programming the LEGO Mindstorms NXT to send messages over Bluetooth that are larger than one byte long um, and are one number. Um, so, yep, very quickly, music is by Unite the Skies, so you can check out his stuff free and listen to it. And, all that. So, um, last time we left off and we had two-way communication going on. We had Master going to Slave and um, Slave going to, going to Master. And so I'm going to open up those, otherwise the um, tutorial would last up a long time, redoing all the stuff we did before. So if this code doesn't look right, um, you can either copy it or you can go to the previous tutorial and watch how we got this far. So that's the master program, and this is the slave program. And um, so we're gonna come right back, or you know, we're gonna get started. So on the slave two byte, um, we have this line right here: outgoing message zero equals two fifty five. And the key about this was if this was two fifty six. 256 is sort of like 100 in our decimal system, where 99 was a two-digit number and 100 became a three-digit number. And a U-byte, the what that means is it can only store eight digits in binary, and 256 takes up nine digits. And like in binary, it is that. That's nine digits and a one at the very end. And so when we say outgoing message 0 equals 256, the com what, ro what the NXT does is it says, okay, that means that number right there. It doesn't include that extra one because it doesn't fit. And so this tutorial, we are going to use more than one byte in our outgoing message to store one number. And so we're going to be able to say, we're going to be able to send 256, and it will put, it'll use one byte to send this part of the message, and it'll send, it'll use another byte to store that part of the message. And, like, you know, we could do, like, 512, or, you know, other, other numbers, and it won't just be one there, it'll be, you know, more, more stuff. And, um, that's the basic idea behind this lesson. So, um, I'm gonna start with a slave, as far as making significant changes, because that's sort of the sending program right now. Um, and, and don't be confused. Um, the master and slave, that, had, that doesn't really apply anymore because the slave is sending stuff back and because we have two-way communication going on. But just picking up from where we were before the last lesson, um, this makes sense sometime, somehow. So um, I'm going to start. The project that we're going to, where the application is, we're going to send back a, um, the uh, ultrasonic sensor. We're going to send back, we're going to send back to the master what the, what the current distance is. And that number will be between 0 and 1023, um, depending on how you've got your sensor configuration. Um, yeah, so I'm going to get rid of this line because it's not going to help us anymore. And... I'm going to declare, after timer, I'm going to say int g, and that's because that's what I can think of, and I'm going to say it's 0. And this g is going to be the value that we decide to send. And in timer, if timer equals equals 0, I'm going to say g equals 1000, and 1000 is what we're going to send over the two bytes, and we're going to get it on the master so that the master spits out 1000. Um, and we could change this to like a sensor value or a different number, but that's the number we want to send is G. And um, what we need to do is we need to break G out into the two sets of eight groups. And I'm going to pull up Windows Calculator because it's useful. Um, and I'll go to View and Programmer. And they've got this really cool setup where you can like put in number, you can click the ones and the zeros, and that is its decimal equivalent. Or you can just go um, go to binary and just use ones and zeros and type it in like that. But um, I want to convert 1,000 to 
um, 1000 decimal to 1000 binary. And so I'll go to decimal, put in 1000, and go to binary, and that is the binary equivalent of decimal 1000. And so I'm going to copy that, and so what we're going to do is our program is going to separate the first four, or first eight, is going to put that in one of the outgoing message spots, and it's going to put, really, there are zeros there. So don't, the, the, it's not like it's going to send like one, one, the rest are zeros, and yeah, so it's going to send those eight in one, and those eight in the other. And so, I'm going to say, byte, um, well, I'll say you byte to be consistent, but it doesn't really matter. Byte write digits equals you byte g. And I actually don't really need you byte there because it's sort of assumed, but that just makes it a little bit more clear. And so what, what this means is we're going to have a variable called write digits, and it's going to take the first eight digits of g. And so the first eight would be those ones. And so next is the tricky part. We got u byte left digits equals, and the thing is, there's not really a way, there's, there's not really like a super super easy way of getting the front eight digits versus the back eight digits. It, there's not like, you can, well, I'll say it's a little bit easy, and um, I'm going to switch over to the camera and show you what we have to do to get those, the, the front eight digits. So, I'm going to go ahead and copy down. There are six zeros and then five ones. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. And then it's zero, one, zero, zero, zero. And so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, um, I'm going to put a little separator so I know where the byte ends. Oh, you can't see that, can you? There we go. So, that's our byte. And what you want to... There's this handy little operator, and it's called the binary shift. And we'll just say this is g equals. And what we can do is g greater than greater than 1 this greater than greater than that in your programming language means scooch all of this that way one place and so that would be zero there would be six zeros over here well actually I'll see if I can color coordinate here we got zero 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 Zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero, zero. And so this, a zero gets added right here, and everything gets moved down, and we lose a zero over here. And so that would be one. And then you can do it two places, or three places, or four places. And we can do that. Um, something else we could do is we could scooch it down eight places. And what that means is eight zeros get added over here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then whatever comes here and then whatever comes here. So that would be zero, 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 one, one. Okay, and that's sort of what we're looking for because if we have g greater than greater than eight, that gives us this and from there, this right here is the first eight, which we can then assign to right digits. Or left digits, I can't remember what it is in the program. That right there is called a shift operator, and they're very useful. Um, and so, we'll do that. Yes, I think I was actually dyslexic when I wrote this the first time, but we'll, we'll, we'll stick with it. So here, you're going to say u byte g greater than greater than 8. And that will give us this part. And it is as simple as that. So now that we've split G 
into right digits and left digits, we need to assign outgoing message to, or we need to assign right digits and left digits to elements of outgoing message, and then write the um, master program. So outgoing message zero equals right digits, outgoing message one equals left digits. All right. So that is what it takes from the slave end. Oh, and I'll compile it just to make sure there's no errors. Nope, no errors that it can see. On the master program, we have to do the reverse. We have to take two parts of one number and stick them together properly. And so part of it's going to be easy, part of it's going to be hard, just like the other one. Um, and so we'll get to it. We've got, we've already got incoming message declared because of last program. And now I will do it right here. Right here, I'll say you byte right digits. And I can use right digits because this is in a separate program than the slave. Than the slave. You know, they'll be running on separate units. So right digits equals incoming message zero. And right digits, that should be, that should, the right digits here should correspond with the right digits here. And so we want to make sure that number is the same as it is right there. And then we'll say u byte left digits equals incoming message one. Okay. Now, oh, we should, um, just for the sake of symmetricality, I'm going to say int g equals zero up here. And down here, I'm going to say g equals, and um, I can't remember if I talked about this before, um, but like this right here, this is called a cast. If you want to look it up on the internet, MSDN, that is like a great place to figure out what a cast is, but basically it means convert that thing right there, whatever it is, to this type of information. And it doesn't work for everything. Like it mainly means just con just give, give me the binary. It doesn't, you can't convert like the, um, the, t the letter A, or you can't convert like the letter or the symbol one to the value one that easily because of ASCII tables and all that stuff. But when I say int um, 4.5, that means convert 4.5 to an int and assign it to G. And um, yeah, and it compiles, it works. I'm not gonna do 4.5 there because if I just did four equals 4.5, it does an automatic cast there, but um, that's another lesson. I'm gonna say int left digits, and I'll explain this once I write it out. Plus right digits, and map. And that's that. So what I'm doing right here on this line is um, what I'll show you. On here, what I'm doing is instead of, well, so we want to get this thing, but we don't have it. Right now what we have, we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Those are the two numbers we have. And we want to, like, I'll, I'll use a decimal example. If I have the number 154, and I, that, that's the number, what, uh, and I want to split it out, I can split it into 100 plus 54, okay? Or 1 something plus 54. This would be, you know, like the hundreds place. If I want to combine these two numbers, I could say one arrow arrow um, two plus fifty four because one in in decimal this would be one arrow arrow that way it'd be one hundred plus fifty four and you get one fifty four at the, at the end and that's what we want and so if we shift if we take this part which is which is, this number is like that number. And so if we take this number, we take that number and shift it over back eight places that way, and then we add this part to it, then we have our original. And so, 
we have arrow, arrow, or less than, less than eight, that would be zero, wait, yeah, zero, 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 one, one, and then a whole bunch of zeros, eight zeros, because that's how many we put in. And then, if we add this part over to here, we get zero, 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 one, one, two, just kidding, um, one, 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 zero, one, zero, 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 and that is, or that's what we had before, and that's what we want. And so by add, by shifting it back eight places, that's when we get it. And so that's what we're doing here. That's that part. And we have an int, we have a cast to an int, because left digits right now, it's a u-byte. And so if you if you if you shift a u-byte out by eight places, there's nothing left because there's only eight places to begin with. Like um if I've got just a second. If I've got my u byte and that holds one 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 zero one zero one and I shift it out eight then all of this stuff will move away and there will only be zeros in here and so I have to and, and there'd be that stuff out here that wouldn't count because it's not in the original box I have to say convert this to an integer which can hold all of this, if that makes any sense, hopefully. So that that's why we have to have that integer cast, and then we also have to have it right here because of right digits when we're adding it. And um, so yeah, that is the conversion. Now we need to display the message because um, we're not doing that right now. Right now we're basically saying each individual value of the message is you know, on each line. So I'm going to comment out this, because we don't need it, but I still like it there. And what we're going to have here is NXT dis not dis display string. I'll pick line 0, and we'll say G equals, and then we're going to use modulus D because it's going to be a whole number. And then we're going to use G. And I think that's everything. I'll turn on the robots and we'll see if this thing can work. Alright, I'm connected to my master so I'll download the master program and this is saying oh, well apparently I need to download firmware. Well, I'm just gonna ignore that. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. <laughs> it was working like a few minutes ago and shouldn't have to download firmware after that. Alright, um, just to make sure these things work. And it connects. Okay, so I'm gonna get my camera back down here and see if we can. Here we go, here's the camera. So when I run my master, G is zero. When I run my slave, G turns to a thousand. So that is exactly what we want to see right now. So now that we've got a good testing value, because, you know, that worked, the, re the reason why we used a thousand here is because if we just set it to the ultrasonic sensor, then we wouldn't truly know if it was working how it should. Now that we do know it works, um, I'm going to change it so that it sends back the ultrasonic. And so I'm going to go motors and sensors setup on the slave program, by the way. Go to sensors, and uh, I got ultrasonic on port one. So I'm going to change so sonar. And I'll just name this uh, ultra, ultra, because that's cool. And um, under G, instead of equaling a thousand, I'm gonna comment that part out and say sensor. Let's see, this is that IntelliSense gonna kick in? Sensor raw, uh, ultra. We'll see if that works. And downloading to the slave. And I'll switch back to the camera. So here, we're getting a number back. And you can just trust me that I'm moving my um, NXT around. That number is definitely changing how it should. And um, so yeah, that is 
how to send a number greater than 255 using Bluetooth. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or um, specific projects you want me to do, send me um, send me an email or go to my YouTube page and write a comment. And yeah, thanks for tuning in.